In this video we're looking at equations of nuclear reactions. Now I just want to make another little statement about these. Uh, this is a radioactive decay. And we call them nuclear reactions because it's dealing with the nucleus. Really important that we get that idea in our minds. It's nuclear reactions, that's why it's called nuclear physics, that's why it's called a nuclear bomb. So uh, conservation laws, when certain things uh, decay, um, there are, or, or uh, radioactive nuclear reaction happens, um, they're, they're nuclear reactions because they're not always radioactive decay, as you can see from the first example here, um, where nitrogen is bombarded by alpha particles um, in the... Um, you might have nitrogen in a, in a gas jar or something. And then one of the products of that is oxygen and the other one is hydrogen. So um, it's not necessarily radioactive decay, but you're bombarding to cause a nuclear reaction. And again, nuclear reaction because it's dealing with changes in nucleus. The nitrogen is changed to oxygen and hydrogen, or the nitrogen plus the alpha particle. So the old um, idea of uh, changing lead into gold, um, which alchemists uh, and crazy people tried to do, wasn't so crazy, because um, you can actually change elements, although that one is a particularly difficult one, and I don't think it would happen uh, in any of the methods they were, they were trying. They used to do, uh, someone tried to distill gold out of urine, because urine looked gold, but it didn't actually have gold in it. Anyway, going on. So there's three conservation laws. Uh, two of them matter mostly with these equations, and one of them is just kind of an extra. Um, and you can probably guess from, uh, if we take a look at this equation, there's numbers in them. And numbers have to add up when you're dealing with equations. So uh, let's look at the top number. 14 here and 4, that gives us a total of 18. And 17 and 1, that also gives us a total of 18. That tells us something. What, what number is the one on the top? That's the mass number, or the nucleon number. So the mass number must be conserved. Okay, uh, let's look at some other numbers. We've got 7 here and 2 here, that adds up to 9. And we've got 8 here and 1 here, and that adds up to 9 as well. So this number down the bottom, which is the atomic number, that also must be conserved. So that's, that's one rule, is the mass number it must be conserved, and the other rule is the atomic number must be conserved. That's two out of the rule, two out of the three rules. And you get clues about which um, particle or uh, which um, element will be left um, based on those numbers. Uh, and you'll see that in subsequent examples. But there's a third law as well, which we're not going to deal with here, <coughs> excuse me, but uh, that is the law of conservation of momentum. Momentum is also conserved, as usual, um, even in these decay reactions. Um, you can think of a nuclear uh, decay or a, an atom splitting, a nucleus of an atom splitting. The two parts might go flying off. Momentum has to be conserved. So if it's initially, sta initially stationary, um, they'll have equal and opposite if there's two parts um, of momentum. Anyway, moving on to some more uh, equations of nuclear uh, or radioactive decay or nuclear uh, reactions. We've got uranium-238, um, that's decaying into thorium-234, and uh, on the left-hand side of the equation we've got 138. On the right-hand side we've got 234. So we need another 4 to get up to the required value. We've got 92 on the left with uranium and 90 for thorium on the right, so we need another 2 to get up there. That looks like an alpha particle. So we could write that as alpha or we could write as helium-4-2. We don't need to put the charges in. Uh, the next one below, we've got a, a neutron that's decaying into a proton. Remember these spontaneously occur, um, roll of the dice at any moment, you can never quite predict it. Um, so we've got one up the top, and uh, one up the top, that means whatever else is in here will have zero. We've got zero uh, on the left hand side, and we've got one on the right hand side. That's odd. How do we get rid of, how, how do we make this one go back to zero? Well we've got to take away one, so we'll call it a minus one. And that reminds us of something else. It's a beta particle, or a high-speed electron. Uh, so a proton plus an electron gives us a neutron. And that's quite tricky, uh, because um, a neutron is made up of three quarks, and a proton is also made up of three quarks, but an electron is a quark in itself, one quark. So we end up with four quarks. But you don't need to know about quarks, and you don't need to worry about that in too much detail. But if it bugs you, just know that energy is conserved, and remember energy is also equal to mass times the speed of light squared, so 
don't panic. Um, next one, next one down, we better change colour because we're We've been in that car a little bit too long. 131, 53 iodine. 131 xenon, 54. It's gone up again, so we're going to have to minus 1. And we'll have 0, and then we've got another beta particle. That's fantastic. So just to make that clear, minus 1 plus 54 gives you 53, working backwards. Uh, last example here, because we've done alpha and beta, beta radiation, beta, beta. This time we've got a gamma reaction. You can see from the products we've got two gamma rays emitted. Um, we've got 60, and we've got 60, no problems there, we've got 28, and 28. What do we need the gamma rays for? What do we need these two for? Well, this curious little figure here is an asterisk, and it shows that this is an excited state. The nickel is an excited state. It might be excited because of heat. Um, it could be uh, that, I don't know actually what else it could have been pressure and um, different electromagnetic fields maybe but either way it's excited it's got excess energy and that energy during the radioactive decay which again could take place at any time you can think that it, it's like shaking and it's waiting it's waiting and then it tips over and out comes these other things so uh, two gamma rays are given off and um, there's no longer that excited thing it's not there anymore so the nickel is now in a more stable uh, energy state and it's done that by giving off these two uh, gamma rays of the equal energy to what was lost with that excited state. So you can see with gamma radiation it don't, you don't have to have two, you don't always have to have two, you could have one, you could have two, you could have three, you could have a hundred uh, gamma, um, gamma rays given off um, it doesn't matter. Um, if in a test um, you don't know how many to put, just put one, that's fine. So that's the uh, very exciting equations of uh, nuclear reactions.